Hey guys, um, it's Comic Crack, and it's, uh, well now it's the 27th, I guess. So, I uh, hope everybody had a good Christmas. Thanks all for, um, all the comments and Merry Christmas wishes and everything on the last video there. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, I watched, uh, I watched Running With Comics and he kind of showed off a little bit of what he got there, so... I thought I'd do the same because I got some books that I'm pretty excited about as far as comics go. And uh, Mr. Tom um, had a pretty good haul as well, too. Um, Mr. Tom's birthday is uh, Christmas Day as well, December 25th. Um, and me and, my, me and his mom switch every year. So this year it was me who had him on the 25th, so for his birthday as well as Christmas Day. And I um, wanted to do a little something special for him. Um, he's big into Lego. Uh, he got um, a couple of Lego sets. Um, we bought him a Lego table that he can actually build on in his bedroom, um, which will be great, and a, and a uh, Lego set here as well. So I figured to keep with that theme, um, he loves Rice Krispie Cake. So a uh, special lady friend and I decided that we'd do a special cake for him. Uh, so it was a, a big pan of Rice Krispie Cakes that then I cut into two rectangles and then two squares. And then we made some marshmallow fondant and colored it and then laid it over top. And we did uh, Lego bricks basically. Um, it was our first attempt at fondant, so I mean, it's a little uh, a little sloppy, but then it's just Rice Krispie squares underneath, and it looked actually pretty fantastic, all said and done. The two rectangles had a, a square in the middle where there weren't the kind of plugs or whatever, so these two squares could sit on top and then put candles in that were on little skewers and stuff. So fired that in there, and he had uh, a, this pink brick, a yellow brick, a blue brick, and I think a green one. So it's, the presentation of it actually looked pretty great. He was really, really excited about it. His face literally lit up, and his jaw hit the floor. as his, holy smokes, Dad. He was pretty excited about it. So that was a nice little, a little uh, treat for him. So it's actually pretty damn delicious. The, the fondant isn't super thick. So it's just a nice thin layer of um, marshmallow fondant around the Rice Krispie Square. And it tastes pretty damn good. Um, anyway, so then on the, the theme of food, a um, couple of the books that I got. Uh, I was a big fan of this show when it was on TV. So Alton Brown's Good Eats, the first one. And I mean, that sucker is thick. It's like... Yeah, almost. It's almost like 400 pages. So that's going to be great. And then I got uh, Good Eats number two, which also comes with a DVD of some like short clips of various things like pickling and how to carve a turkey probably and prop properly and that sort of thing. Um, and that one is a, another 400 pager as well too, I think. Actually a little more than 400, like 420 pages. So. I'm um, really excited about that. Those should take me a good couple of years to go through those whole books. Um, anyway, and then the comic-related stuff. Uh, I finally got my hands on um, Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. Uh, Sleepy Reader had suggested it. Uh, Spiro.Geek, Geek, I think, had ordered it as well, too. Um, and I've heard about it for a long time. It's just I never... I'd seen it over the years on the bookshelf, but I didn't really think it would hold anything super interesting. But after all the reviews I'd heard, especially in the past few months, um, people saying such positive things, and then reading the back, and guys like uh, Art Spiegelman and Matt Groening and uh, Will Eisner praising the book, um, I'm really, really excited to, to read this. I think that there's a follow-up to this, too, that apparently isn't as good, but... Um, this is uh, this is the one. This is the gem. So we'll see how that is. Um, I like how it's all laid out in comic form as well too. Um, I started reading it just where he's kind of going 
uh, through the overview and uh, the definition of sequ sequential art and things. Um, and one of the things that he says in it is uh, discovered around 1519, this 36 foot long, brightly colored, painted screen fold tells of the great military and political hero, Eight Deer Tiger Claw. Is it comics? You bet it is. We even re read some. Um, and he talks about how they don't use panels in it, and he feels that that's something that, uh, that and then uh, something called the Bayou ta Tapestry, don't use panels to tell the story, and he feels that that's something that modern-day comic artists aren't uh, exploring too much. Now, this was back in 1993, it looks like, is when the first edition of this came out. Um, so that was back then. That ties into another book that I got, which I, I was, honestly, I was very surprised um, and really, really excited. I've got a couple of the single issues. I don't know if I've ever talked about them in a video. Um, the, the writer and artist himself, have, he's gotten a lot of praise. And uh, the, the couple issues that I've read have been phenomenal. Uh, and drawn in quarterly put out this and it's fucking enormous first of all it's called uh, Big Questions by a guy uh, Anders Nilsson and one thing that sparked that is one thing that he does uh, not through the whole not through the entire book but he does quite a bit is actual pages without panels um, so there is no borders, and he'll play with that. Let's see if I can find another example for you. Um, and I think does it quite effectively, like something like this, too. You know, breaking up a page with little scenarios uh, as opposed to actual, like, black lines and borders and things. Let's see what else we can find. Here's some more here. So, like I said, not through the entire book, but there's there's quite a few sections where it's purely um, it's purely that. And I mean, it's an unbelievably beautifully done book. They did an incredible job. Um, it's the the big question story itself is like 584 pages. Then there's an appendix where Anders Nelson, I think, talks about the book. And then it looks like there's some pages, I don't know if they're from... Uh, oh, there are other comic strips that appeared in Big Questions 1 and 2. Uh, and then there's reproductions of the covers, and I think then there's some sketches. Uh, and I don't know if each one is different, but in the front... This picture here is glued onto the page, so I don't know if different volumes or each issue or each book rather has a different picture in it or something. Um, the kind of liner in here is just is glued onto the inside front cover. It's heavy duty hardcover. Uh, the spine is amazing. Um, it's it's just a be an absolutely beautiful book. Anders Nelson also has a I think he just had a another book just recently come out too. I don't know if it was like a sketchbook collection or another kind of graphic novel, but um, the little bit that I've read of, from this, it, it's pretty incredible story. Uh, I I don't fully know the story because I haven't really looked into it, and like I said, I haven't read enough. One of the issues that I read. Uh, revolved around a couple of, I think there were crows or ravens or a couple of birds anyway, um, that were kind of overseeing the dead body of their bird friend, and one of them went off to forage for food because otherwise they were all going to starve, and that was the story that revolved around it. But in just flipping through this one, I see there's also humans and other animals involved in this, so, um, and it kind of breaks it down who all the characters are. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, birds. There's a tree stump named Thelma. There's a snake. Um, there's a pilot. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, for the most part, it's birds. And I think there's 
two or three humans in it only, and the rest is based around this this family, I think, of birds. So super excited about this one. I can't even I can't even believe it. And seriously, like the the picture just doesn't do it justice of of what an amazing job Drawn and Quarterly did on this book. So really really excited about that. And for sure, as I'm reading that, for sure I'll do kind of like updates and. I'll try to really walk you through it and give you kind of reviews as I'm going, and I'll, I'll keep on top of that one. Um, but before all that, I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of books to read. The one that I was most, another one that I was really excited about getting, as soon as I heard that it was coming out, I kind of bookmarked it, and uh, Fantagraphics does a thing where when they have a new book out, they do like a little preview trailer, and it's just basically somebody flipping through the book just to give you a sense of here's what the interior looks like they do a couple of close-ups on the page they'll show you the spine you get a sense of how big the book is um, so I bookmarked it because I was really really wanting it uh, it's Peanuts Every Sunday by Charles M. Schultz from 1952 to 1955 um, it's a big format book. Um, again, fairly thick. It's almost like a, you have to lay it out on a coffee table to read it. And it is 200 and approximately 215 pages. Then there's a little bit of information about the reproductions. Um, apparently, up until this point, all the reproductions of the Sunday strips have been in black and white. What Fantagraphics did was they recreated the strips in color um, and tried to mimic as closely as possible what the color would have looked like in the original Sunday cartoon strips or comic strips. Um, I've always kind of been a fan of Peanuts. I love the specials and stuff like that. But I gotta say, I wasn't really as much of a fan of the later stuff. Um, sure, some of like the 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 kind of um, I mean, it's these it's these adults in children's bodies, and they're they're all filled with like self doubt and all these kind of just kind of conditions. And I find that really really interesting. And I love some of those. It's really really comical. It's really funny. Um, really kind of depressing as well. Um, if you haven't seen it, I, I did, I think, bookmark it on my page because I watched it in a couple of kind of sittings. Uh, there was a, there's a great documentary on YouTube about Charles M. Schultz and his life and his family. and it's, it's really touching and really sad. And a lot of the stuff that happened in the strips, I mean, because he really, his voice is Charlie Brown for sure. But his, his voice is also Schroeder, the guy at the piano. Um, I think his voice is also a bit Linus. And you can really see at certain stages of his life what characters kind of come to be. Um, and one of the interesting things was that when he was going through some particularly hard times at home, all of a sudden Snoopy's world became like this, where he became the Red Baron, um, or Sno fighting the Red Baron, right? Is that what it was? I, I'm confused a little right now. But that kind of imagine, imaginative world came more to the forefront of the stories. Um, and that's very interesting to me based on what was happening at the time with him. So I'll just kind of give you a... So just inside. And the dust jacket reveals this. Peanuts every Sunday. Even without knowing what's going on, I can tell that I've been insulted by Charles Schultz, 1952-1955. Um, Fanographics also have a series of the daily comic strips in smaller book form, and I believe the Canadian artist uh, Seth designed the covers for those ones. Um, I love... Sorry, I don't think I finished that thought. The newer stuff, while I like the stories of the newer stuff, I really, really love the illustration of this, like especially the 1952, like the first year. Even in 1954, as you get later on in that year, you can see his style changing 
to what became more the classic, what everybody knows of Charlie Brown. I mean, it still obviously morphed a little more, especially into the 80s it did. But his comic strip before Peanuts was Little Folks, I think. Um, and I love that as well. I think there's a collection of that too that I'd love to get. But there's something about the illustrations in this um, and something that you've heard me say a lot of times, uh, his line in some of these, and even in the documentary, just seeing him create these characters, the, the fucking perfection of his line when he draws Charlie Brown's round head and draws the mouth and everything, like the, the, the focus and the precision and the quality of his line work is so incredible. Even seeing a little bit of wavering, you know, like the the, the line weight is what is the word I'm looking for. You can see that a little bit, but um, I, I think it's I think it's absolutely beautiful stuff. So yeah, there's a there's another look at that and. If you if you are a little, even a, a small fan of uh, Peanuts, I'd highly recommend picking this book up too. Looks like it was like 50 bucks in the U.S. or whatever. Um, I know that our kind of chapters in Indigo online, you can get deals online and they offer free shipping and all that sort of stuff. So I'd, I'd say it's well worth the money. It is a huge book. Uh, but uh, it's again, it's beautifully well done. Fanographics does a great job. Um, I'm really, really excited about that. So that's kind of that's what I got. And the one that Jaden got a couple of comics in his stocking and stuff. Uh, he got mostly like board games, card games. He got the Marvel Legendary card game, which we actually played this morning before I dropped him off back at home. Um, and it's it's a hell of a lot of fun. The only downside, we've looked around here and I haven't found them. There was two cards missing from the game. Um, and it makes two of the... I mean, it doesn't make it unplayable. It just makes two of the superheroes... They're supposed to have 14 cards each. Two of them have 13 cards each. So it's just one down. So I'm going to email them and see if we can get a replacement card, if they'll send it to me. The good thing about the game is, now that we've played it through once... Um, it's not one of those like, hey, here's the cards and, oh, now you need to go and buy some extra decks. You don't. Everything that comes in the box is all that you need to play the game. Um, the game kind of plays against you, so to speak. So you can play as a team uh, from one to five players. You can even play it by yourself, like just solitary. Or you can play against each other and, they are, and up to five people against each other, which I find really cool as well, too. Um, especially for Jaden and I starting out, it was just better for us playing as a team uh, against the game, I guess, against uh, Red Skull in this case. I think it's going to be a really, really fun game. Uh, really looking forward to it. He was, that was the, the, I mean, he was excited about all his gifts, but he was pretty damn excited about this one. The only one that he was more excited about was this next one. He opened up the box and Again, it was another his his floor his jock at the floor. Um, he got Marvel year by year a visual chronicle from uh, one of his grandma's um, special lady friend's mom actually got him this one and it's we sat afterwards when I when I could finally kind of sit down because we hosted. Christmas this year, it's the first time in our new house, obviously, but it's the first time, period, that we've kind of had everybody over at our place for uh, Christmas dinner. So obviously we had a lot of extra work to do, we did a turkey and everything. Um, I did sit with him for about a half an hour and we looked through it. It's incredible. Uh, he was thrilled about it. The, the moment we saw this in the bookstore and he looked through it, months and months ago, right away he said, oh, that would be a great book to have, Dad, because he really loves Marvel Comics, and he really, really loves... Like, he's really getting into kind of the older ones, too, and um, 
the thing he loved most about this one was going through the years where the characters were created in the 60s like oh hey look Spider-Man's first appearance was in this and the Hulk's was in this and all that sort of stuff he was interested looking at the 50s stuff and he found it interesting me telling him some of the stories that the, the couple of stories that I know from those times which aren't by any means a lot of them um, he was interested in that sort of thing so he's really getting into the it's very cool that he's getting into not only reading in comics but he seems to really be getting into art and artists uh, but also kind of this hopefully will spark an interest in like the history of comics and um, what came before and we've talked about like this shows us we can look at what came out the year that I was born we can look at what came out the year that he was born because it spans all the way from 1939 all the way to the 2010s is what it's called so I don't know if it goes to 2013 because I'm not sure looks like it's 2012 because I'm not sure when this book came out let's have a quick look here so it came out 2013 uh, it doesn't say when in 2013 but uh, anyway so it looks like it, it goes up to 2012 as far as talking about comics and things and a brief little looks like a one page yeah just a one page Marvel now where they do talk about 2013 so there we go answered my own question um, yeah we kinda made it up to the 70s looking into the early 70s but really really cool um, a lot of just a lot of information about creators and about characters and their titles and things and like I said there's a lot of information about when characters were first uh, when their first appearance was and stuff like that the X-Men are reborn giant size Avengers and then they also have throughout they have some recreations of covers uh, with the two page spreads there which is pretty great as well too um, so I, I think it's gonna be a really really cool resource for him um, it doesn't you know and like I said every page is laid out like this so you're not getting you're not getting pages and pages of text where it's going to go really deep into the history of Marvel Comics but I think it it's I think it does a really good job of giving you like the the kind of a good overview and something that's really good for a kid like Jaden who just wants to see a little he wants to see some cool pictures and hey check out that monster that they drew and check out that superhero look how different the Hulk looked that sort of thing and then get a little bit of information um, so it's a really really well done book and hardcover as well and in the back I won't pull them out but in the back you get a couple of uh, posters too um, I think one is the poster recreation of the cover so and then a, a really nice slip case for it as well like that so there's the back cover I guess and then the updated front cover the newer version so very very cool it, what happens at Christmas and his birthday is he ends up opening so many uh, presents and especially if, if I have him for Christmas Day I'm usually kind of when that happens whoever has him Christmas Day is kind of at the tail end of all his presents so you can kinda of see some years it's been a little worse than others where by the time he gets to that last group of presents with people because he's got grandparents and who are split up so it's two sides of the family there and then there's two sides of the family here and now with the family extended um, his mom's new husband and and now with special lady friend and her family that 
by the time he gets to the end, he's really almost not quite glazed over, but he's really kind of like, wow, I've had a lot. Oh, yeah, this is a great present. Cool. Thank you. You know, I have to keep reminding him to say thank you because he's just kind of, in a way, he's almost done with like, okay, yeah, enough presents. All my toys are over there. That's great. I just want to sit on the couch and vegetate because I'm kind of overwhelmed. But like I said, when he opened that up, it was just one of those moments where he literally was like, whoa, dad, check it out, and showed everybody and sitting in the middle of the room with us and immediately ripped it out of the plastic and immediately pulled it out of the slip case and started going through it right there like that instant. So that was very, very cool. Um, it was a really, really nice gift for him. Uh, so he's going to love it. He's all about Marvel. So um, anyway... I think I think that was it, really. I mean, he, he did great. We got a DC. We did get a Justice League uh, puzzle, which we're going to be doing. But um, this year, it was a Marvel year for Jaden, and it was a independent year for, for Pop, um, which is super exciting. So I hope everybody had a great Christmas and have a good New Year. Um, I'm going to try to tune in to Running With Comics on Sunday. Apparently he's got a big event going on. I think he said noon Eastern time. Um, if you are watching, Scott, I did get your message about extending an invitation for me to be on. That's really, really nice of you. But like I'm saying, I, like I was saying to you before, I think um, I go to pick up Jaden that day too, so I don't really have a huge window where I can kind of dedicate time to being on the show. I'm going to try to watch what I can. Um, and I'll for sure watch it again once it's kind of off the air and I can get a chance to sit and watch the whole thing back to back. I appreciate it. We definitely will sometime, but uh, everybody should watch because it sounds like he's got something going to go on. It sounds like it might be a bit of a, an epic event there with a, a bunch of people on his show and just talking about random comics and maybe what they got for Christmas and you can see everybody's haul. So thanks for watching. And again, thanks for all the great comments in the last video, and we'll talk to you all soon.